Hello and welcome to another recording of our live streams. Uh, today we're doing some code and chill. We're going to be playing about with JavaScript a little bit. Let's share screen. So I decide to go with sort of replit this time around. So we can kind of have a little play. Let's clean up the screen so I can actually do stuff. So we've got a basic thing. Let's let's make some sort of a canvas game. We've got a script.js, we've got an actual web, sort of like HTML, we've got some styles.css. So, so look, there's nothing in the script. You don't really have anything here. So the first thing I really want to do is set this up so that we've got a space to have our canvas as such. <clears throat> so <laughs> in reality, all we really need is some sort of a script tag or, or some sort of a tag that we can put stuff in. So I'm just going to make like a canvas tag. Yeah. So let's swap this out and have canvas. Uh, we'll give it an ID of game or something like that. Um, need like some sort of size I'm going to say like so let's say 400 by 400 start we can see how that looks so we want width equals 400 and height equals 400 there we go so we've got something to hook into so that should be fine. So now we can kind of get on with some script itself. So to hook into this, we need to kind of get the context of it, but we also need to kind of get the, I'm going to do either get element by ID or, or query selector. So we'll call it like canvas equals document dot Query selector, and we'll pass it. Uh, we had an ID of game. <clears throat> okay, so now we got we got our canvas. We want to make a context based upon that canvas, so we can say like CTX context canvas dot get context. And we want it to be a two-dimensional canvas, so we'll say 2D, not 2S, no? 2D. Um, we'll probably add an event listener in a bit, so I'll put that as a to-do. So we can have like keyboard controls or something at that point. And we also want to set a animation interval. That's another to do. <clears throat> so there's a few things I might want to do. I've got to think about what sort of... Um, Let's just make a snake game or something, something fairly simple. Let's imagine we have our players' X and Y coordinates. So we'll probably have like, um, uh, probably want some sort of a velocity. Uh, what else are we going to want? Hmm. Probably going to be a few more things to play about with. Uh, what I'll probably want is kind of the idea of sections of the um, snake as well. So let's say um, sections array or something like that. Uh, let's think... How big do we want the actual end? Um, 
section size or something, maybe. Okay. Now we'll make some sort of a, a game, sort of loop or game function to do the logic of the game and all the bits and pieces that we want to have in the main game sort of functionality. That's what we're going to want to do. Uh, we want mm -hmm. some sort of a callback for uh, key controller. So that's going to be like part of the uh, checking of the event listener. And I think that should do, actually. So we'll have this main function. So we might have some more um, variables as I decide to go on up. Yeah. Um, I think. Hmm. Let Let's just try and get something on screen doing stuff. Yes got a context we can do stuff so we are we want a game function so there we go. let's think so I want to let's set some of these things. So we want like um, player x equal to I don't know ten player y equal to ten or something. Uh, let's make our velocity v x equal to zero to start with and y and v y equal to zero as well <clears throat> so these are our velocity stuff so that that can kind of go there i want some sort of a sections array i want a general section size so i'm going to say like five pixels So we'll we'll probably add more as we go. We're probably going to want like the size of the game, where we're going, and the food or something to be uh, moved around and do stuff and whatever. Um, yeah, I'm kind of going to want to. Um, hmm. Let, let's do like basically in the main game, I'll just do the updating to start off with. So first off, we're going to want to say our player uh, X is plus equal of velocity X. And our player Y plus equals velocity Y. Let's see. So now we need to decide upon like where we're going to be moving or wherever you so hmm. let's think about this i want kind of some sort of a um hmm you like game space and a tile component of some sort here Hmm. Let's say this price is equal to and two. 
thousand one is equal to twenty over one. Um, food x is equal to zero staff with no actually let's say 15 and food y is equal to 15 we got 15 by 15 there we go. i think that'll do um let's, let's kind of play with this so <clears throat> what I want to check is, am I is my player X position less than zero? Because I need to kind of make sure that the player X is no longer, you know, it's not anywhere near the wall, so it can't hit the wall, sort of thing. In that sense, I suppose. Or all right, but we'll we'll think about that. Um, let's say if my Player X is less than zero, then my player X is equal to my TC minus one point. Let's do, let's say it's greater than that. So if my player x is greater than tc minus one, then set it to zero again. But basically wrap around the screen sort of thing. Same again for the actual player y. We want the same sort of concept. So if player y is less than zero, that means we're off the screen, so we can wrap back around. That means that then player y is equal to tc minus one. Then if player y, is greater than my coil count minus one, then my player y is equal to zero. Okay, so we kind of confined it within a wraparound and it just comes through in my opinion. So I want to kind of fill the background in. So what I want to do is I'm going to say um, context dot fill style and set that fill style to, I don't know, black or something for now. Sign the background for the later. And then context dot fill rect starting at zero, zero and moving to the uh, canvas dot width and canvas dot height. Okay. Now I want to do a context dot bill style and change the color to let's say green. So here's where we're gonna kind of draw our snake. So for this I'm gonna loop over some stuff. So I'm gonna say for let i equal to zero, while i is less than, uh, what do I call it, sections? Yep. Sections dot length, i plus plus. You can draw each one of the sections. So now I want to say, let's make a filled rectangle with that. So ctx dot fill rect of um, sections at i dot x 
now I need to times my game space. So the size of the actual thing. So GS is 20. So times 20. Actually, I could have actually hard code that. So do it that way. Yeah. Then we can do the same sort of thing with the Y. So sections at I dot Y times base. Then what we want to do is we want to do basically our game space minus two and our game space two. So that should give us an interesting sort of um, sectional approach to our thing. Then what we can do is we can say if the sections at i dot x is equal to the player's x. So if it's hitting the head of the player and the sections at i dot y is equal to the player y, then we must have had a collision with our player. So let's say that our um, what do I call that section size equals five again. So we can play about with the section size in a bit. So when we kind of get food, let's make it bigger and stuff. And let's see. I'll still want to do. So that will kind of draw the stuff. But now we need to actually be able to add an extra thing inside our sections each time that we kind of do stuff so i want like a push onto it then so where are we that's the for loop we finish the for loop and after that for loop we want to then do sections dot push let's make that into like a object and we'll say x to by uh, x, y is equal to by, uh, y. So basically, that will be like, okay, we now have our initial player crept up. Now, while the uh, sections dot length is greater than the section size, then we need to start moving the thing along. So I'll say, um, section start shift. Now what we need to do is we need to check whether it hits any food so we need food. Did I make a food X and a food Y? I think I did. Check though. FX and FY, yeah. So what we want to check is now we're checking for collision. Let's look. If my um, food X is equal to my player X and my food y is equal to my player y, then I've just collided with some food. So what I'm going to say now is section size plus plus, and I increment the section size. So now, if I say my uh, food x, I need to kind of randomly move this. So we can use like the math.random. Times something. So 
I had a tile. Where's my tiles? TC is 20, isn't it? So let's say times one, two. Now I want to floor this though, because we don't know. It's not necessarily going to be um, a whole number. So math dot floor. Um, we'll floor the whole of that. And then same, whoops, let's put an equals there first. And same again with food Y, I think. I'm saying 20, so we, we can use that TC thing. You know? Did I do, yeah. So we can swap that out so we can kind of play with that end all the time. Right, so now that we've got it sort of colliding and stuff like that, let's draw like a border around the place, I suppose. Like, yeah, should be up to. Uh, let's say context dot fill style equals red. Let's say context dot fill rect. Starting at food x times same size. I think I made that in one. Yeah. Uh, and food y times game size. And then one game size minus. Two and game five two. There we go. So that should do for that functionality there. So let's clean this up a bit. There we go. Now I want some sort of keyboard control. So like uh, KB control. Can't I don't know some sort of name. And it's going to take in. Let's, let's do a const. Keyboard control equals it's going to take in an event. And then we'll do a switch statement. Switch on the event dot key code. Now we want to do hmm. And do right arrow. Okay. Uh, so we need the key codes for like um, up, down, left, right type things or something. Yes. So let's see. Is it 37 the right key? I'll have to. Uh, I think we've got like 37, 38, 39, and 40 for these things. But let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to go with a case of, let's try 37. I think it's 37. We'll find out in a minute if I start what I'm bashing, it goes all over the place. Uh, so our velocity x is going to be equal to mm, negative 1. We go left. And our velocity y can be 0 because we're not moving in that direction and then break. Same sort of thing with next case. So case by 38. So in this situation, we want to do, so that's going to be kind of op. So that's going to be velocity y in the negative one, isn't it? So we'll do a vx equals zero, vy equals negative one, and break. And then we go with a case of 39. Oops. Let's think. So 39 is going to be. 
down. No, not down. It's right. Sorry. 39 is going to be right. So if 39 is right, that means we need a VX equal to 1 and a VY equal to 0. And break. Then we can do a case of 40. Right, there we go. Case of 40. So for this one, we're going to be moving in the Y direction. So this one's going to be literally like um, the right arrow key. So VX is going to be to zero. And VY is going to be equal to 1. Going there. I think that's the entire cases to deal with for that. So now that we've got our key control callback, we can go and set that up. So, look, so we want an event listener. So for the event listener, we're going to be using the callback of uh, like the key control. So to do that, we can do document dot add event listener. And what we'll say is for key down, we use the key controller. Then what we want to do is we want to kind of say, okay, well, I want to loop the game function. So, so I'll say set interval of the main game function. Um, you know, well, let's just do like 15 frames per second to start with. So 1,000 divided by 15. Let's give us good enough sort of tick count and such. I did call it main game, didn't I? Let's double check. Yeah. So that's going to kind of loop that as being like the update or the game loop or whatever. Now, depending upon typos and other things or... Did I need to do, yeah, key code was like that, I think. Um, we'll find out now. Let's save that. Sorry, format in JS fail. What? We failed. Hmm. That just mind about formatting, wasn't it? Formatting script has failed. What's that got to do with the actual? It's just not like me saying no constant stuff. So let's look at what's going on here. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so yeah, a couple of little typos fixed. And it was just one of those noises. So now it's loading up. So basically by clicking here and start pressing buttons, we end up with our snake. When it hits the bottom, it comes through the top. If it hits the left, it comes through the right. If it hits the right, it comes through the left. And it hits the top, it comes through the bottom. Damn, it's quite fast. Thing. There we go, got some food. And it's randomly... Uh, putting the food in different places that it goes and grab the come here. There we go, I got some. Wow. Seriously. Wow. Definitely quite quick. But it's growing fine. And when you hit yourself, you end up kind of resizing back to how you started so five sections We're trying to grow to explain that as we go really fast this okay now if i go back on myself see i'm going back to 
zero or rather to singular size. So, okay, so we've got our script done. We've got our main sort of web page. I will link the um, script, the replit um, link in the um, video description as well. So that was a fairly quick sort of script top of a really simple JavaScript getting with. Hope you find it enjoyable. Feel free to um, like and subscribe as you see fit. Okay. It's been awesome as always. I'll see you in another video.